What's up guys, this is Brad Watanabe coming back at you with another tech tutorial. If you're like me and you love cameras, these are the six that we use in studio all the time on projects. And these are the five steps that I go through when I try to figure out which camera is right for that project. Number one, budget. Budget is always gonna be one of the first key indicators for what type of gear you wanna use. Now, when I was first getting started in the industry, I owned a Canon T2i, that's all I could afford. I had a kit lens. Eventually, I bought a 50 because everyone told me that's what I was supposed to buy. I didn't have any clients at the time. I just was shooting for fun, so I got the budget camera so I could learn about the aperture and white balance and all of those things. So my budget uh, was $0. It was zero dollars because it was what I could afford and I was just learning stuff. I wasn't actually getting paid to do it. So I bought what I could afford or what my wife would allow me to invest in. Um, but with clients, we talk to them about what their budgets are before we even get into the tech. Uh, if they've got a thousand dollars for their budget, uh, it's, it's not going to be a red project for us uh, because our camera package for the red costs more than a thousand dollars for a day just for the camera. You might be more in line with using like a small camera like an Osmo or even your phone if those are the types of budgets that you work with. As I started to move along in my experience, I had another budget factor come into play. I would start to invest in other cameras. I went from the T2i up to the 5D Mark II to the 5D Mark III. Eventually I ended up buying a C100. Um, and I was always conflicted because I wanted to get the best image quality I could make. And I knew that wasn't on my T2i anymore. It was on my C100. So I had to think through my own personal uh, reason for making this work. If I wanted this to be a portfolio piece that I wanted to then shop around for other bigger projects, other types of clients, I would choose my C100, even if the budget didn't call for it. And the reason why was because I purchased that camera and I wanted to make sure that that was the camera people started to hire me for going forward. Which leads me into point number two. When you're evaluating what kind of projects you wanna take on, think about where they're going to lead you. If you wanna start shooting bigger broadcast type of work, if you wanna start thinking about bigger documentary work, sometimes it makes sense to try to rent a camera that you might not be able to afford to purchase or own, but think about renting a camera as a way of investing in your education. So the very first project that I started using a RED camera with was actually a pro bono project. It was a project for a rehab hospital. They didn't have money, um, but I, I collaborated with a friend of mine who had a RED camera. And he's like, dude, um, because the project, it means something to uh, this, this nonprofit rehab organization, he was willing to let me use it for free. Uh, and it became a way for me to test out this technology, see if I could actually implement it into other people's work without having to invest in it myself or having a client have to invest in the technology from their budget. So for me, that was actually a huge win because what it taught me was that, yes, I wanted to start working with RED cameras. My buddy was able to hook me up with the camera, I was able to shoot it, and then from there on out, I was like, I have to be shooting as many projects I possibly can on RED technology because I loved our 3D workflows, I loved how it felt to actually operate with a big camera, and it just made my post workflow so much better. Which leads into point number three, to dress, to think, to act, and to choose your cameras appropriately. So you talk to your client, you talk to the production team, what, what are the types of cameras and technology they're used to working with? If they're used to working with REDs, you're probably gonna need to figure that out. If they're used to shooting on A7Threes or GoPros for their production, that's probably the appropriate decision for that project. So understanding what clients expect, what are the results they want to see from a dynamic range perspective, if they're matching other shots that they've they found in other locations or whatever that is, Knowing what technology they need, what they expect, is a huge part of your camera decision-making process. Number four, and one of my favorite parts of this decision-making process is ergonomics. It's about choosing the right camera with the right ergonomics for each part of the project. So we went to Japan recently, we had a red, we had a black magic, we had an A7 III. They all got used for that project because in certain cases, we couldn't bring a red with us. It was too small and cramped when you're walking through small stores in Japan, or if you're going into really low light situations, sometimes the A7 III actually looks better than the Red Dragon. So these all these different trade-offs 
um, and all these different upsides to these different cameras that we have. So knowing which ones are appropriate for particular shots, for particular ergonomic types. If you're running and gunning, sometimes like a C300 or C100 it might even be better than a RED. If you're traveling and you don't have the ability to bring a ton of V-mount batteries with you, sometimes you need a smaller battery on a smaller camera just so you can get through customs, you can get through airports smoothly. All of those things are big parts of your camera technology decisions. And step five, which I think is one of the most fun, creative decisions you can make about cameras is the look. Uh, back in the day, you would choose Fuji or you'd choose Kodak or you'd choose all these different types of film stocks based on the look that you wanted to get. If you're shooting black and white film, you're obviously not gonna get a color image. Dragon sensors are different from Monstro, which is different from Blackmagic, which is different from Sony, and they all look great for different types of applications. So choosing your camera is also going to be like choosing a film stock or choosing a paintbrush. You're gonna choose the thing that you want to film to look like. That's a huge part of this decision. So if it's gonna cost you a lot more money and baggage fees just to get all the right tech to the location, if it's gonna be a huge case, if it's gonna be a small backpack, um, you're gonna choose the right things to get the right image that you need. Sometimes the right look is an iPhone. If you're looking for that selfie look, if you're looking for that very like first person perspective, iPhones are great for that. We did a project in Japan where we use iPhone specifically to get that type of look. Sometimes A7 actually looks better for a particular type of shot. Like you can get different types of time lapses with a still camera than you can with a cinema camera. All of these things are about the look and the aesthetic and the storytelling that you're doing with these things. Those are the five things that I go through when choosing a camera. I hope that helps you out in your decision-making process. If you have any questions about these cameras in specific, or if you've got tips that you've learned along the way, I'd love to know what types of cameras you use in the field and how you make those decisions for yourself. That about wraps it up, and we'll catch you on the next one. Aloha.